I'm going to begin just by asking why this particular story, and then was it one that you knew a lot about sort of prior to writing the screenplay, or were you kind of actively seeking out a story and stumbled across it? I, I got really lucky. I found it as a footnote in a book, and I, I, I just, it, you know, I was reading, it was a, it was a biography of JFK um, that Robert Dalek wrote called An Unfinished Life. There was a footnote in the book uh, that mentioned this man, James Donovan, who'd been involved in this spy swap between Rudolf Abel and Gary Powers, and it said he's a lawyer. And I just remember reading that footnote thinking, what, what, do, what do you mean he's a lawyer? Like, how does a lawyer get in the middle of this moment that I'd never really heard about? So I started to research James Donovan and realised that there really wasn't a lot about this man. The more I pieced together through, you know, New York Times archive and the JFK Presidential Library and all those things, the more I realised this guy was incredible. You know, he was involved in a moment that where we were really on the brink, America and Russia were on the brink of something very scary going wrong, a nuclear war and a big standoff, you know? And he kind of walked us back from the brink, but he was an everyman. He could have lived next door to you, and I just thought that was amazing, you know? And did you sort of speak to many people who knew him? And, and also, if so, did you kind of, do you know if they've seen the movie and if you kind of gauge their reactions? Uh, a huge moment for me was meeting his son during research. I met his son in a, a midtown diner in New York and it was very emotional, you know, because when you meet, uh, you, you meet a man who, you know, is now in his mid-60s. He grew up, obviously, with his, with his father as a big figure in his life. But I think he felt that his dad had done this remarkable thing. But because he was kind of a quiet guy and not a showy guy, he hadn't had his moment. You know, the, the history had kind of forgotten James Donovan. And so I said to him, look, I, you know, I'm not really anybody. You know, this is really early days for me as a screenwriter, but I'd love to tell your your dad's story and I'll do the best I can. And he sort of trusted me with that. And so that was a huge moment for me. And then it came full circle really because uh, totally unplanned, him uh, and his two sisters, who are, all of them are depicted in the movie, sat down in front of me at the premiere in New York. And I was watching the movie and I was watching them react to the movie and seeing how emotional they were through the movie and then getting big hugs from them at the end made me feel um, that maybe I'd kind of honoured their dad, really, and that, 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 that it was a kind of uh, an emotional experience for me, really. And of course, you went from the UK to LA hoping to kind of find some work, and I just wanted to know how you sort of managed it. Because it, I sort of read somewhere that you sort of compared it, the whole process of meeting producers to sort of speed dating. It is. I mean, it is, especially early days in your career, because you basically, I was, I, I was out there, uh, I was supposed to be out there to um, talk about a certain idea, but that idea had already been set up somewhere else. So we had all these meetings and I had nothing to talk about. So my agent said, we'll just talk about you and just do what they call general meetings, right? General meetings are excruciating because all you do is talk about yourself for an hour. And I- and Sounds I'm, like a junket. Yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably is like that. But I just bought, I just, after the first meeting, I just was so bored of my own voice and myself and what I was talking about. I just thought I can't, do this. I also, my little boy was very young at that point and we had a baby and, and, and he was, you know, our baby was only about four or five months. I felt so guilty about being away from home and my wife being, yeah, no, it's fine, didn't sleep very well last night, but you know I mean? The idea of me going from coffee to coffee, just sort of talking about myself, felt wrong. So I started to think, okay, well, I'm here, I'm meeting these great people, what have I got? What stories have I got? And this was one that I knew uh, in my heart of hearts was a story that I really wanted to share with people. So rather than doing general meetings, I just started to say, actually, I've got a story I'd love to tell you. So I pitched it seven times a day for five days and, uh, and DreamWorks bought it. Because I was reading about <clears throat> how you would sort of make money sort of early on in the career to try and sort of fund your sort of ambitions, I guess. And am I right if you used to fabricate home videos for You've Been Framed? And if so, did you ever get that 250 quid they never promised? Got a single, never got a single I check. Fabricated 15 videos. And do you know what? The most complicated part of fabricating a You've Been Framed video is you can't send them out from the same address. Oh, okay. So obviously you've got to get friends, you know, gran, granddad, all the rest of it to send your videotapes in. And then you get the awkward part of fallen out with a friend of mine who made them with me fell out with his girlfriend and he was like so now I've got to phone her up to find out whether we got the 250 quid will you do that for it was a very complicated thing we never made a penny what was the best one you made best one we made involved falling in a pond uh, there was a there was a I'm not a very sporty guy but my, my friend who I was making them with was so he did a scissor kick that went wrong and he fell in a pond hilarious um back to the movie uh, you sure? You I'm want to sure. Talk about uh, I've got, I, I could ask about all 15, but no. Um, and I must be so surreal seeing this story, these words that you've written, 
brought to life by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. I mean, can you, can you, you must be able to recall the first time you saw Jurassic Park and E.T. and Jaws. I, mean, I, had, it the must, po- I had the posters on my the, wall. You must I, have to pinch yourself. I, yeah, honestly, I do. I really do. There are mornings that I wake up that I don't, for a moment, I don't remember that this experience has happened. And then I remember. And then it does feel like a dream, um, partly because a huge part of a huge part of my life is sort of almost chapter marked by Steven Spielberg movies. I remember how old I was when certain movies came out, when I saw Saving Private Ryan, and we were in a caravan park in Norfolk and my granddad was there and he said, um, you know, let's go and watch this thing. You know, how old I was when Jurassic Park came out, all of these things, I know what I was doing. So there, it's almost like, uh, you know, I, uh, you can dive back into your life when you watch those movies again. So the idea that somewhere there's maybe a 10, 15 year old girl or boy who was watching Bridge of Spies and might remember that the same way I remembered some of those movies is, yeah, that f- feels amazing. Yeah, you'll never forget how old you were when you, Steven Spielberg released Bridge of Spies. Either, I, <laughs> um, I mean, did you know he was on board prior to writing the screenplay? And if so, did that alter the way you write it? Did you have to kind of, um, um, I don't know, play up to his kind of sensibilities as a filmmaker, try and kind of alter it slightly to, to when, match him? When DreamWorks bought it, um, I flew home and just, I, might, I could have flown myself home, I was so excited, you know, and I, I got back and there was an answer machine message saying, Steven Spielberg would like to hear this idea directly from you. And I got very uh, flustered, the idea of telling him the story over the phone. And when we got through, when I, when I pitched it to him over the phone, when I had his response, which was basically, I love this, when can you write it? I just had a sense that this was a story that gravitated for him, not just as a producer, as, a, as, as you know, a producer at DreamWorks, but as a, a man who directs movies. So I was very clearly in my head writing a movie that I wanted Steven Spielberg to read and go, I've got to do this. Because for me, everything this movie could be and needed to be was everything Steven Spielberg is as a director in terms of finding the complexity in this story, you know. So I was, I was going hell for leather to try and get him to direct it. Of course, you're sharing screenwriting um, credits with the Coen brothers, yeah. um, who are also I quite know. good. Pretty um, good, right? Yeah, what was that process like? I mean, I kind of imagine like you were all sitting in a room thrashing out ideas, wearing vests, and then when one of you had an idea, you stubbed out your cigar and had your typewriters. Was it like Yeah, I mean, that? we weren't wearing, we were all naked, obviously, <laughs> at, that, at, that, at that point, because it's, it's better to work that way. Uh, no, the collaboration was a lovely, it was a lovely collaboration. They obviously have got their writing partnership, which is, you know, got a f- fairly good track record, I think it's fair <laughs> to say. And... They came, they came with such an amazing energy and an ability to pick certain scenes up and look at them in a different way. Then to get the script back from them in a kind of a baton passing exercise to then uh, rewrite you know, other scenes and, and, and raise the bar again, to then be sitting on set next to Steven Spielberg seeing the words you've written come out of Tom Hanks' mouth. It's, it was an amazing film school at every step really. You know, Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks and the Coen brothers is, yeah, it's, yeah. that feels good. And also, not only Bridge of Spies, but Sweet Francais. I've said, have I said that right? You've said that wrong. Uh, Try Franz- again. Francois? No. Francais. Francais. Okay. Yeah, is that Please include all yeah. of that in, in this. Yeah, Sweet Francais, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Um, and next up, Patriot's Day. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was just wondering, I mean, obviously, these are all quite intense dramas slash thrillers. I was wondering if that's where you can see yourself staying genre-wise, or do you, can you see yourself one day, you know, writing a horror movie or, or a comedy or... Definitely. I'm mean, definitely a comedy. Love the idea of a musical comedy. I'm writing something for Fox at the moment, which is in the kind of young adult area for the for the lady Nina Jacobson who produced um, The Hunger Games. So I'm really excited about that. That's a very different. That's a change of kind of feel for me and tone for me. But I like to write anything I watch, which is everything. It just so happens that these movies are intense and dramatic. But I think. Uh, Something, something different is is coming, which will be fun, you know. So what's the name? Is, has it got a name, the Nina Jacobs? It's called Wilders, Wilderness. Ah, looking forward to it. Well, thank you so much for your time That's today. Right, it's mate. been a real thank pleasure. You. Cheers, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey You Guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!